everyone, today we're going to be starting further indices and we're going to be starting with index laws in this lesson. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by introducing to you two index laws. So this is the first one, this is the second one. So with the first one, when numbers with the same base are multiplied, the indices are then added. So in here that what they're saying is, see how the base here are both A? and we have index for this one is m and the index for here is n. And see how we're multiplying the two terms together? In that case, as long as you know that the base is the same, all we do is leave the base as it is and simply add the indices together. So m plus n is our new index. Okay, so leave the base as it is. Okay, so that's just a simple rule when you're multiplying two terms. Now here, when numbers with the same base are divided, the indices and then subtract it. Okay, so opposite manner to this one, when we're dividing, and as long as you have the same base, all you do when you're dividing these two terms, you subtract the indices. So m minus n is what we put. Okay, and the base remains as a. Okay, that's when we're dividing. So just these two, that all you, that's all you need to remember for this section. Okay, so take a look at that. And write that down somewhere so because we're going to be keep using these two. So let's get started with the questions. Starting with question one and always just make sure when you're doing these questions the base is the same. If they're not the same we can't do the addition or subtraction of the indices. So we know that the base is both a so it's multipl multiplying so we add the indices. So 3 plus 4 is our index so that becomes 7. Okay a to the power of 7. So it's easy as that, that's all we're going to be doing for the question. So let's get into the next question. Question two, okay, the base is all the same. And remember here, if there's nothing here, you know that there's power of one, right? So even if it's three terms, it's all multiplying, so we simply add all the index. So just like that. Okay, so add all the indices, so the power of A becomes two plus three plus one, which is simply A to the power of six. Yeah, and always just leave the base as it is. We're only working with the indices. Now question three, okay, now we have to try to match the same base. So see how we have A, A here, and B, B here. So we put the A's together and the B's together. Remember, we're always working with the ones with the same base. So again here, A is a power of one, and here A is a power of three, okay? and then we work with the b's together. So what I'm going to do is put my a's together. So a to the power of 1 plus 3, so we add the indices since we're multiplying, and then b to the power of 2 plus 5. Okay, we add the indices of b. Okay, and that's all you're going to be doing. Simplify, and you're going to get a to the power of 4 and b to the power of 7. That's all you need to do, okay? So just match the ones with the same base. That's question 3. Question four, now we're gonna simplify. Again, we're multiplying. So again, we have two different bases. We have M and N. So we match the M's together and the N's together. Simply do this. So M to the power of two plus three, okay? And N to the power of six plus seven, okay? Add the indices together, well, that has the same base. And simplify, that's what you should get. So it's very, very easy. Okay, have a look. Question five, this time we have three different base. So M, N, and P. So again, just do your usual thing, match the ones with the same base. Now, as you can see, M, N, and P over here, they all have index of one. Okay, if there's nothing there, you know that it's gonna be power of one. So we're gonna do the usual thing. M to the power of one plus five, and N to the power of one plus three, and P the power of 1 plus 4, okay? And then to simplify. Okay, so after we just do five of these questions, you should be getting quicker and quicker at these. Have a look. Question six, okay. Now, we have A and B. So again, we have two different bases. And see how we have the coefficients here, two and three? We multiply the coefficients together, okay? So we multiply two and three together. And then a, see how it's a to the power of 1 and a to the power of 1, so we go a to the power of 1 plus 1, we add the indices, and there's only one b, we don't have to do anything to it, we leave it as it is. 
So we simplify like this. So 2 times 3 becomes 6. Okay? Make sure you multiply the coefficients together. So that was question 6. Question 7. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We have m and n, and we've got the different coefficients. So we multiply the coefficients together and put them in front. And then m has a power of 3 plus 1 plus 4. And n has a power of 2 plus 5. Okay, as easy as that. As long as you can match the in, uh, base terms together, there's not a big problem. So 3 times 2 times 6 is 36, so that's our answer for question 7. Okay, so have a look. Okay, now we're on to some division. So, see how we're dividing a to the power of 4 with a to the power of 3. So, when we're dividing, as long as you have the same base, we simply subtract the indices. So again, we have the same base of a, so all I need to do is subtract 3 from 4. And then you should get just a to the power of 1, which is just a. Okay, so very, very easy. It's just subtracting. The only difference is subtracting. Question 9. Okay, so we're dividing 4a to the power of 7 by 3a cubed. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, again, first I must make sure that they have the same base. They do. And see how they have coefficients? Don't worry too much about the coefficients. Leave the coefficient as it is, 4 on 3. And then a will be 7 minus 3 because we're dividing. So we subtract the indices, leave the base as it is, and that just simplifies to that. So the power is 4 now. Okay? So leave the coefficient as it is in this case. Question 10. Okay, so we're going to be dividing again, and just I made sure that the base is the same. So the coefficient is 21 and 7. Now I think 7 divides into 21. So it's 21 divided by 7 is simply 3. So simplify what you can. And then leave the base b as it is. And we simply subtract the indices. So we go 6 minus 2. Okay, because we're dividing. And then it's 3b to the power of 4. Okay, so it's very, very simple. So it should be getting quicker. Question 11. Okay, we have two different bases. M and N. So we'll put the M's together and the N's together. Just like this. So M to the power of 7 minus 4. And N to the power of 3 minus 2. Okay, because we're dividing, we're subtracting. And simplify, that's what you should get. Question 12. Okay, simplify this again. Now remember we put the coefficients together. So 2 divided by 4 is going to be a half. And then x will have a power of 4 minus 4, okay, minus the indices. And y will have a power of 3 minus 1, okay? So have a look. And simplify. And you'll see that there's no, uh, there's no more x because the index is 4 minus 4, which is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So the x just becomes 1, so it's half y squared. Okay, so that's what we get. Have a look. And... Let's move on. Question 13. Okay, so it's going to be this one divided by this one. And the coefficient of here is just 1, so we leave the coefficient of 7. And then we put the a's together. So a to the power of 1 minus 1. And then b to the power of 5 minus 2. And then c to the power of 4 minus 4. Okay, so we've got that. Just simplify the indices, and that's what you should have. And realize that a has a power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. So a to the power of 0 becomes 1. And then here, c to the power of 4 minus 4. 4 minus 4 is also 0, so c to the power of 0 also becomes 1. So we're only left with the b. Okay, so see how the c and a becomes eliminated. Question 14. So now we're asking a to the power of 0. I've actually mentioned this in the previous question, that anything to the power of 0 is simply 1. So a to the power of 0 is 1 as well. Okay, Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Here, 2b, the whole thing to the power of 0, it must also be 1. Okay, Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, Now, 3x to the power of 0. Here, what you've got to be careful is make sure the answer is not 1, because 0 is a power to x only, not to 3 as well. So x0 is a power to x only. So is 3 times this one here becomes 1, okay? And then you simplify it to 3, okay? So just, just don't 
get confused with there. That's question 16. Question 17, 4 times b to the power of 0. Again, 0 is a power to b only, so it's going to be 4 times b to the power of 0. This is 1, so it's simply 4. Okay, so it's very, very easy, as long as you remember that anything to the power of 0 is 1. Question 18, okay, just be careful, make sure you know which ones are going to be the 1. So I know that this one is going to be 1 and this whole thing is going to be 1, isn't it? Because 8 over 4, the whole thing to the power of 0, so that whole thing is going to be 1. So it's going to be 4 times 1 minus that one, which is also going to be 1. So it's simply 3, okay, 4 times 1 minus 1 is 3. Easy, easy stuff. So let's move on to 19. Okay, guys, which one's going to be 1? Well, y to the power of 0 is 1, so 5 times 1 minus 12, which is simply negative 7. Okay. Okay, now when you get to something like this, what we do is simply multiply the two indices together. So a squared, the whole thing to the power of 3, all we do is multiply the indices together. Because have a look guys, this simply means a squared cubed means a squared times a squared times a squared, isn't it? Yeah? So remember how I told you to multiply the two indices and the answer becomes like that, which is a to the power of 6. Now this one is also, remember when we're multiplying we add the indices, so it becomes a to the power of 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is a to the power of 6. So we eventually get the same answer. So the whole idea is just don't worry about putting it out like that. Just simply multiply the two indices together. And that's another rule that you should remember. Okay, so take a look at that one. Okay, that's 20. 21. Okay, so remember how I told you to multiply the two indices together? But if you have another term, see how it's 2 to the power of 1? You must multiply 1 with 4 as well. So you're, putting, you're multiplying 4 to every single term's power. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 1 times 4, which is 4, and then a to the power of 5 times 4. Okay, so you make sure you power it to every single term. So 2 to the power of 4 should be 16, and then a becomes has a power of 20. Okay, so make sure you're powering 4 to all the terms inside the brackets. Now 22, okay, I've got a fraction, but we're still doing the same thing. We must power 2 to every single term inside the brackets. So we have 2 squared, and we also have 3 squared, and then we multiply the powers of n to the power of 4 and 2 together. So n to the power of 4 times 2. Okay, so see how I put 2 to the power of every single term inside the brackets? And to simplify, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 times 2 is simply 8. Okay, so see the pattern? Here, again, and just make sure that if you have nothing here, it's power to the 1, so it's power to the 3, we must multiply to every single power inside the bracket. So we have a to the power of 2 times 3, and b to the power of 1 times 3, which is simply just 3. So simplify, that's what you should get. Okay, so you should be very familiar with this now because we've done very repetitive questions. 24, same thing, let's do the same thing as we did for the previous two questions. 2 to the power of 4, m cubed to the power of 4, which makes m 3 times 4, so we multiply the powers together, and same with n, we multiply 5 and 4 together as a new power. That becomes... 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 3 times 4 is 12, 5 times 4 is 20. Very, very simple. Okay? As long as you remember to do it to every single term inside the bracket, I don't think it's going to be any problem. Okay, so again, question 25. We have A has a power of M plus N. Okay? Don't get freaked out by this because it's more than one in a power. M plus N is the power of N, sorry, A. The whole thing is the power of A, and the whole thing is power to B, a P, sorry. So we're multiplying this power times this power, so it simply becomes A to the power of P times M, M plus N. And then you can expand that out, expand the brackets, and get A to the power of MP 
plus NP. Okay, that's all you need to do. So just as long as you apply the same rule, shouldn't be a problem. Okay, question 26. We have a fraction, but remember what I told you, just put a power of x to every single term inside the brackets. So I'm going to have a to the 2 times x, which is 2x, and b to the 3 times x, so b to the power of 3x. That's all you need to do. And 27, okay, we've got a to the power of b, we can't change that any further, so we'll leave it as it is. And you know that p to the power of q, the whole thing is power to 0, so we know that that whole thing's going to be 1, so it's simply going to be a to the power of b as our final answer. So see how we did that? So make sure you always remember that anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so that was some basic laws.